Hello and welcome to our webinar that was supposed to happen yesterday. Uh, but here we are. We want to cover up our ground today. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just I'm just getting into uh, the LinkedIn message group so that we can stay connected and can have a conversation. So I don't know if you're, if you're there. I'm just going to drop a quick hello, a quick hi. So yeah. Hello and welcome to Saro live on Consent Manager. Uh, while we are, while we have global regulations, while we have, while we keep discussing, keep implementing things like GDPR and you know making sure privacy is there. Uh, here we are, right, talking about a thing more specific to Indian context, right? A thing more specific to where it all started, right? I think. That's where we are today. So we'll talk about consent managers in another few minutes. Yeah. If you are already online, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and you know this session is going to need some brain power so that we can have a communication as well as we can learn something and you can share something with me if you know something more. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So meanwhile, while you are joining, right, while we are having this conversation, uh, where are you joining us from? Right, which city, which which part of the world are you today uh, talking to me? Right, so I will drop in. I'm in Bangalore now. So yeah, uh, hi from Bangalore. What about you? Where are you joining us from? So yeah, as we go down the line, uh, we will keep this today's session short. We'll talk a bit about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, quickly get around consent manager. Uh, what are things that you should be thinking about for your organizations? Uh, some things are very, very uh, different when you compare it from from the globe because internationally there is no such requirement as consent manager and I was in a conference uh, recently by DPO club and we were talking about consent managers and by the way I have a lot of learnings from that uh, and it was it, it was hosted in uh, Nishit Desai right and that's where I kind of got in touch and got into more detail about consent it was generally uh, until even if you look at rules like even if you look at upcoming rules it's you know, the consent manager piece has always been, you know, a trouble. I think the, for the person who wrote it as well as the person who's reading it, right? So I'm saying it's a, it's a two way bad street, right? Because it's very complex. And the reason behind coming out with a consent manager, I, I don't know, maybe it, it, it also arose because of the children data and the high insecurity that we see in India about children data. Now think about it. You have a kid, his data. Uh, he gave consent and how will, how is he uh, able enough to give a consent to play a video game on his laptop, right? Or on his mobile, on, on your mobile, right? He doesn't have a mobile, come on. But it's obvious that on your mobile, if, if, if somebody is watching kids YouTube, right? Until and unless, right? Until and unless if somebody at our age group also likes it, it can happen. Uh, but generally, generally speaking, uh, it's a high probability that a subscribed, a person who has subscribed is actually uh, a child, right? Or a person who's playing the game is actually a child. So where I'm coming from is the children data becomes very, very uh, difficult to manage, very, very serious, 
highly vulnerable data set uh, can be utilized in 100 different ways. Uh, think about it. When somebody knows that you know you have kids and you know in this area, let's say there are 50 families who stay in a society, have kids ranging between 10 to 4, then they would be like, okay, so I should probably do an ad right on this in the society basements for this for this product and and i understand that i understand why a company would do this ad right and if i would have been a company i would also like that data to do that but the question is not that the question is was it anonymized enough or do you have names of those children or do you have you know unique identifiers of those children where you can identify uh, where they exactly are right and that becomes vulnerable right that makes things uh, difficult because think about it uh, now this thing is being used by a marketing agency but you know how vulnerable our data sets are uh, everything is available on dark web today companies are denying the fact that their data is on dark web now for a company of that size if that data gets leaked uh, anybody can get access to let's say you know where are these hundred vulnerable children or there are societies which are more vulnerable so i'm just saying like overall just not from a privacy per se, but also from a physical security per se, uh, when something can go wrong, right? And, and being in a field uh, where we have been auditing and we have been, you know, implementing controls, uh, I have seen things go wrong, right? And this question we keep asking, like, what can go wrong? There are things that go really, really wrong. See, we cannot wait for 100 wrongs to happen. One wrong is more than enough. So so in, in, in terms of that, right, we have to think about... Uh, how do we you know, manage the consent framework? And as an organization, what we should be thinking about when it is about the children data that we, that we are going to utilize. I think very funnily, uh, I'll also tell you what happens is I've been participating in these, uh, you know, in, this, in writing these policies and external privacy policies. And, 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 I, and then this is a general disclaimer in the privacy policy, it says we do not accept children data, right? But is it possible that they do not accept children data, right? What if somebody is actually putting it and he doesn't understand? See, till he doesn't understand, I still get it. But when I was on Facebook, I was, you know, and let's be, let me be honest with all of you. When I was on Facebook, I was in class, you know, maybe like 10th or 9th. And the minimum age limit to Facebook at that time was 18 years old. So all my data of birth was wrong. So and everybody knew that, right? Every, it was an open secret, right? Even if there was no clause, there was no control at that point in time. And again, technology was also growing at that time. So I'm not here kind of, you know, commenting on technology. Uh, I'm just commenting on thinking about things uh, that can become very, very serious in very short span of time. And we do not feel that way. I'm just talking about those things. I'm not here to criticize meta like my fellow privacy professionals do and i keep saying this wherever i keep going that hey my mom is on meta, my mom is on whatsapp so i think i'm probably not going to shift from that platform anytime soon right until it kind of closes so and, and and that is the level that we are at and we can try and change and you know bring uh, something right but and also in an era where technology goes so fast uh, and the technology goes uh, regional, right? So maybe if we have something, some other option, we will see. But until we have a UI of that level, and how does WhatsApp make money, by the way? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always curious about that. I'll actually go and check today. They read their reports. Are they selling our data? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just having a conversation with you. Okay. So hi, Rahul. Hi, Subhar. I do. Hi, Nikhil Raj. It's good to have you here, right? So, okay, so I won't waste more time and we'll get going then. Okay, a bit about Saro Consulting. Uh, what we do is we are consultants. Uh, we implement uh, technologies, uh, processes into organizations on privacy and cybersecurity. Uh, what we have been doing is we've been working a lot since last three years. We are active since last three years. We are ourselves at ISO 27,001, Now, today I'm leading provider of governance services in the industry. Uh, a disclaimer, this is this is not a legal advice. Please take this advice as a reference and educational purposes. Only I represent myself. 
A bit about me, I am the founder here. Uh, it's been eight years in privacy and governance. What I've been doing is I've been implementing privacy programs across organizations and GRC and ISD programs across organizations. So uh, that's my general day-to-day -day work in solutioning. Like we talk and we end up solutioning and then we have a hundred odd member team. So they're implementing these things. Okay. Today we'll talk about what is the difference between consent requirements, uh, who is or a company or a person who is it who is a consent manager right let's kind of talk about this today uh what are these best practices for consent management and key points in consent framework that you should make sure that they are there i know if you're already present in other jurisdictions this may not be a big question for you today if you already are present in other jurisdictions it's totally fine you know it's you may not need it right now but if you're not present in other jurisdictions now is the time to have to onboard something or build something on your own, right? Generally, there are two options. Either you can build your own uh, infra. And I think six years back, I was, you know, sitting with a CIO day before yesterday in the club. Uh, and, and, you know, we were just discussing this that, hey, like six years back, everybody was building their own consent frameworks. But today people are actually buying and we are also selling. But generally, it's, it's, it's always a give and take, right? If the cost of making is lesser, if your tech team is that good, if it's not, then just take something and you know, just enjoy that. Okay, so a consent manager can be an individual, right? Or can be a person, can be that, you know, that, that company which gives a connector, right, to manage consent centrally. And then you use that central framework to connect your organizations to that. So that for me, as a person, I can register with a consent manager and then as consent manager, right, I become more and more, uh, you know, like more connected and more have more rights. Like, think about it. There's a good example to that. Uh, this was being discussed again. Google verification, right? So Google verification is like a consent manager today, right? Because you have, if you go to Google verification, you can go where all the password you kept like which all passwords it has, where all you have logged in, you can just go and click it out, right? Same thought process from a technology per se, right? But in your organizations, you will have data protection officers. These data protection officers should be in line to reviewing whether consents, whether consent managers, consent is being managed, or is the framework, DPO is the person who has to be in line to line one for consent, I feel has to be the technology teams uh, because either they are implementing it or they are doing it, but you know, taking it through an information security route becomes a bit more difficult because the information security people also don't know what type of data is being managed inside the organization. So again, from a tool per se, technology per se, I get it. A lot of information teams are actually technologically sound and doing it. I am with them, right? But from a review and approval per se, the CISO team should not be involved in the DPO work because then it becomes a conflict, a huge, huge conflict of interest, right, which is arising across and some companies have got fined in Europe, though in India it's still fine, the fines won't come, uh, but a conflict of interest definitely arises and we see the friction every day in teams across, which, which is not, which doesn't help. Okay, so understanding the consent requirements, okay, so So basically the thing is the consent has to be verifiable, right? And this is something that people are talking about from day one, right? If it's not verifiable, it's it's not something that uh, people are looking forward to, or, you know, you cannot justify this. Okay. So one more thing, while we're talking about this, and since we are talking about this, we are, we always forget one thing. We're like, Hey, uh, where is the data protection board? Right. And if data protection board is not there, I am not stressed. Right. Uh, and, and I hear this conversation right, left and center coming out to me, uh, though the organizations that are being regulated by SEBI and RBI don't say that right? because they already have regulators. So any, any industry that has regulator would automatically make you follow the consent requirements because we already had IT Act and then we already have a law passed in privacy. Rules are up to come, though rules legally we are required to do that. Under 2017 Putta Swami judgment, we are required to respect the right to deletion. So what I'm saying is uh, 
the enforcement not happening that much, you're not getting fined, that doesn't mean that legally it is not required to do. So what will rules do? Rules are, I guess, now, a, uh, you know, now time for rules to quickly give us more clarity. And from there, probably we will, you know, see how it goes, right? That's what we will see from rules, like more details into, you know, what is, what is needed. Okay. okay. So what is the difference? Like GDPR doesn't talk about consent managers, right? Uh, they have organizations like, IAB, uh, you know, the organization that manage consent, manage marketing. Uh, so they get guidelines from there and then those guidelines become more important because the regulators are, you know, like more, more straightforward or more compliant that. So that, that's what happens generally. Okay. So for consent manager, right? you have to register with the data protection board of india right so first thing that then you have to make sure that the data principles and fiduciaries the consent transactions are recorded and in and enforced right if consent is if somebody revokes consent you have to delete the data right let's just let's just be honest about it if you if somebody revokes consent you have to delete the data So talking to a bit, talking about a bit of best practices now. If you have any questions, also you know, I'm totally open. You can just drop them in the chat box, right? And thing will will take it up from there. Uh, if you if you're looking for a consent thought process, uh, the first thing that you should start from is uh, what are your data subjects, right? What are the people? Where all the data is coming in from? Uh, for all employees, if you're taking consent, uh, my suggestion as a consultant and not as a lawyer, right, is uh, make it minimize as much as possible, right? There, there are case scenarios I know where we have to take the consent, but just try to minimize as much as possible, right? And after that, it's fine, right? It's some places, for example, for passport processing, visa processing, international travel, uh, obviously there will be consent, right? And then insurance, your family is going to get involved. Again, there will it won't be it won't be on the contract that you're signing in employment. So, what I'm saying is that legal basis of processing when it is consent, uh, think a lot more about data subject and the type of rights, uh, the type of rights that you know we can uh, we need to kind of implement, right? So these are the th few things that we should be thinking about. A, a lot of times, see the thing is when a regulator comes in. Right. A lot of times when I am also doing work, people are saying you're only making policies and going. Right. See, the thing is, it starts with the policy. Right. Everything, the culture starts with the policy. So the policy has to be there, not just for us to implement, but also for the regulator or our or the contracts that we are signing with our com, you know, our vendors, or we are signing with somebody whose vendor we are, right? Customers we are serving. So all these contractual obligations in terms of liability, and I'm not a lawyer, but unfortunately, this is a field where you cannot move ahead if you don't know legal knowledge. So wherever you are, please get that depth in legal uh, to understand these requirements more clearly, because otherwise what will happen is you will just copy paste requirements from GDPR, which will be online. Because in consent manager, more requirements won't be there. So, and that will become a problem for you long term. Because in India, you have to look at IT Act. You have even if nobody's checking, but you know if the legal case happens, then you know it, it, everything gets dragged there. And that is the unfortunate, you know, uh, where we are, right? Unfortunate thing. So can't help it. Okay, so give consent, and and I think Nikhil, I think probably your question is uh, slides. Uh, I I will, uh, you know, I think probably I will. DM and send this to you. Yeah, we are not. This is not open for everyone, so we generally do not send these slides. Um, but I will ping ping you on that. I will talk to you. Okay. So five points, right? Uh, consent cannot be given without notice, right? 
consent cannot be given with without notice and notice has to be a, a mandatory thing while it is on the website right yeah. so how do you like think about it right and i, I was doing a podcast on uh, how my data on tinder i need to get deleted and i think you know generally I speak about this people laugh at it right for some friends of mine who are getting married this is not a game of love <laughs> they are very serious about their data privacy so so what i'm saying is uh, even there right you have certain rights so i have a question to all of you will you go like to any app like tinder let's like, say you used it you'll go and request them hey delete my data will they delete your data what do you think what do you think guys will they delete your data or not let's see same goes for shadi.com High five! High five! And is there a okay? Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to read the policy. Okay. So is there a chance? Okay, there's a question in the chat, a very important question. Uh, also go through consent managers. I think everybody has to go through consent managers, right? And the consent manager is also a, a thought of enforcement. Right? And consent manager is also a difficult to enforce. So maybe we'll see a few changes here and there on that, or more clarity on that specifically, because uh, a bit more difficult, a bit more challenged, you know. Uh, because I feel like earlier uh, this thought could have been, you know, that we start with Aadhaar when we already have a good identity system. Uh, but now, since uh, I think Aadhaar is Aadhaar Act, and Aadhaar is not allowed to be shared uh, with other authorities or you know, let's say a consent bank, uh, government is also coming out with a new identity, right? And probably once we have a new identity center, maybe that can be used for things like consent management, right? But right now, it's a lot more difficult, a lot more. challenging to kind of implement this and enforce this right and even if you implement this how do you enforce this right even if they come out with a guideline it's near to impossible for anybody to go and check right okay so folks if you have any questions i can take them but consent manager is unfortunately this much only right so and this is the amount of knowledge that is there in the industry so i just shared it with you uh, and that is that brings me to the end of this conversation today but i'll see you saturday 11 am next week so i'm kind of meeting everybody again and again on saturday 11 am series this today i've shifted because of uh, yesterday there were some issues and glitch while running the webinar so we i'm sorry for that uh, we ran it today a bit later so yeah that's a bit about us yeah so thank you everyone uh, thank you for joining in and yeah and that brings me to the end of the session today and thank you for joining thank you for you know